never put up with a teacher shot. It's been nearly three months since first grade teacher Abby Zwerner was shot by her six-year-old student at Richneck Elementary School. In that moment, what's going through your mind? I was terrified. Um, in that moment, my initial reaction was, your kids need to get out of here. Now, the 25-year-old teacher is demanding the school be held responsible for the near-fatal incident. A new lawsuit filed just this morning alleges gross negligence and reckless breach of duty against the Newport News School Board and three former administrators at the school for failing to protect Zwerner from the student's, quote, known history of random violence. Despite multiple warnings, including three other staffers telling the then assistant principal that the boy was carrying a gun, the administration refused to take appropriate action, according to the new complaint. Do you feel like you could have been better protected by the school? Yes. You feel like they should have done more? Yes. The local prosecutor decided not to charge the six-year-old boy, but said he is investigating whether others could face criminal charges. Everything about this is so unthinkable. I wonder what you think or how you feel about this student. You know, there's some things that I'll never forget, and I just will never forget the look on his face that he gave me while he pointed the gun directly at me. That's something that I will never forget. It, it's changed me. It's changed my life. In a previous statement, Newport News Public Schools told NBC News they are focused on the well-being of their students and staff and have since added more security measures to their buildings. A lawyer for former Richneck principal Brianna Foster-Newton has said that she was not made aware the boy had a gun on the day of the shooting. In the past, the other two administrators named in this lawsuit have not commented. And with that said, let's bring in the attorneys who filed this lawsuit moments ago on Abby Zwerner's behalf, Diane Toscano and Jeffrey Bright. Good morning to both of you. Hi, good morning. Diane, let me ask you about Abby. You know her well. How does she feel about this step? Why did she want to bring this lawsuit? So Abby is a courageous young lady, so brave. You were able to hear from her two weeks ago. Um, she is really pushing through. Every day is different and challenging. You know, she's going to be dealing with this for her entire life, the physical, the emotional trauma. Um, but she is ready for what we're doing today. We're going to hold those accountable for what happened to her, to the, for the tragedy that was completely preventable. Well, let's talk about that, Jeffrey. You're suing the school board, the superintendent, the principal, and the assistant principal. One of them, the principal says, hey, I wasn't the one that was warned about this. I never received these warnings. Your lawsuit says, yes, indeed, she was. What are the facts that you have gathered that support these allegations? Well, we know for a fact that there were at least three opportunities for them to stop this from happening. And how many people were involved in the decision making will be a part of our discovery, obviously. But right now, the allegations are, and we believe the facts will support the fact that they knew that they had three complaints. And then eventually, a teacher comes down there and says, one of the students has actually seen the gun. At that point in time, you have a ticking time bomb in the school and the school failed to do anything about it. The lawsuit contains some pretty disturbing allegations. Some have not been reported before. You say that the boy had strangled a teacher the year prior and that his parents did not want him in special education. They wanted him in the general population of students. How does that feed into your case and affect the case? Well, I will tell you, we've done our due diligence. Uh, we stand by the facts in the complaint as they're written. Um, and as this case comes forward in the courts, I think things will come out um, that we will be able to address at that time and use to explain how this was preventable. These facts, as contained in the complaint, are quite egregious. Are you yes. surprised, Jeffrey, that it has gotten even to this point where you're filing a lawsuit, that there hasn't been a settlement? Do you expect it to go to trial? The school board obviously has insurance, and the insurance companies here have the people that we've dealt with, and they have a very narrow defense. So far, they're standing on that defense. I think when they read the complaint, they're going to understand that we have more com facts than they thought we did. What's and the defense? Well, they're going to try to argue that this is a worker's comp, that a person can't sue their own employer in Virginia. But Virginia has very special laws and very interesting Supreme Court cases, and this is an exception. No six-year-old student 
is really going to be a risk of shooting a teacher. It's not a part of their job. It's not a night 7-Eleven worker. And so I think the workers' comp defense will fail. Well, I noticed a line in the, in the lawsuit, actually, Diane, it making a point to say this shooting was personal to Abby. It was not part of her job as a teacher. Can you uh, elaborate on the significance of that? I mean, is it your understanding that the school board is going to say this is part of the job of being a teacher? You assume the risk of being shot by your first grader. That's correct. That's what they've maintained up until today, that that is just part of the job. It's an assumption of the job that a four, first grade teacher is going to be shot by their own student, a six-year-old. Uh, that is unacceptable, that's outrageous, um, and that's not what happened here. And finally, $40 million in damages. How do you arrive at a figure like that? She's got permanent injuries. Her hand will never be the same. And of course, she's left with a bullet and fragments in an area of her brachial plexus. The surgeon said they can't remove it. It's lead. And so she's going to live with these bullet parts in her body. And something's going to happen when they start to migrate through her body. And so it's a fair number, we think, for what's happened to her. And emotionally, I mean, what do you think is next for Abby? I mean, I was asking her when we met, you know, do you think you'll teach again? What do you think your, your future holds? And she really said she didn't know. Right. Her future is uncertain. She loved being a teacher, loved teaching children, uh, but the emotional trauma she has sustained is just unbelievable. Um, so her future is uncertain at this time. All right. Diane Toscano, Jeffrey Bright, the attorneys representing Abby Zwerner. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or Click the link right here.